All right, so when you think of investing, you probably are looking at ETFs, stocks, crypto, you name it. One of the biggest ETFs out there is none other than Kathy Wood's ARK. We're going to break it down today on a market mover. My name is Paul Barron, this is TechPath. All right, let's talk a little bit about the market movers and what they are. Basically, these are a combination of data, sentiment analysis, our own opinion, and a whole derivative of research that we pour into it, hopefully to provide you guys kind of an overview of where something is moving or how something is trending. Uh, as a reminder, this is not investment advice. Just uh, be aware, this is an educational and research package that is based on our own findings and options. Options meaning what we go out to use in terms of research. We're not financial advisors and highly recommend you do your own research and due diligence in anything that you're gonna do uh, in terms of investing. All right, let's jump into what the market mover is gonna be about today. It's gonna be the status of the ARK ETF, flow comparison to sentiment, and, the, and also where are the impacted investments over when you look at their fund and you really kind of break it down and we're gonna look at all that. And then kind of the long-term of where all this flies out into. Here's the thing with what's happening. If you go back just, first of all, let's kind of go back a year. If you think about back a year ago, ARK was not necessarily an ETF that was even on the map just yet. Her fund, Kathy Wood's fund, had just really started to ramp up and we really didn't see a lot of activity until mid last year. So when you look at one of the things that is very critical on any kind of ETF is the, the flow rate, inflow, outflow. So this is just a quick uh, review right here. Kathy Wood's funds whipsawed amend record outflows and rate spike. This was something that was posted in February uh, 24th. So you can kind of see what's happening here. A lot of inflow right here pre the market dip. This is in February. Those lines essentially indicate the amount of funds that are moving into it. On a positive note, you can see very few outflows occurring in the ARK ETF. So that's something that I think when, when you really kind of drill back down into it, and the reason I wanted to, to look at February was because there's a lot of, of particular investors that were in ARK in the late rounds, meaning uh, September, October, November, December through February. Those are the late rounds of growth for ARK. And uh, because of that, it really shows a potential leverage here of why sentiment is starting to shift here. And I, wanna, I won't give away the, the whole lineup, but we are gonna break down sentiment not only on ARC, but also on the accumulative fund itself, meaning the number of stocks in the portfolio and what that looks like. Before I get into it, I wanna show this article here. Kathy Wood's ARC invests snaps back with near record inflows following a week of outflows amid tech decline. Now this again, is another scenario that we've seen a, a tremendous technology and consumer, I won't say kind of the consumer central uh, goods out there. And when I say things like that, companies like a Peloton, uh, et cetera, even to a certain extent, someone like a Zoom, a Teladoc, also consumer, but these are all very tech oriented companies that of course fall into the track of the ARC Innovation ETF. But they did see near record flow inflows at 467, uh, 64 million on Friday, and then signaling that investors were willing to buy near the top uh, versus where I think a lot of people should have been is back in the early days of that, uh, that in investment to be able to hold on to what we're seeing now. Here's gonna be the scenario, and this is where I think people are kind of running for the door when it comes to ARC. And, and let me just make sure you guys understand perfectly clear. I'm a big Kathy Wood fan. I have looked at her investments over the past year. She did kind of blow onto the scene and became a thing very quickly. Her potential of being able to grow the ARK investment strategy is, is basically in its kindergarten years. This is a, an investment firm I think that's gonna be a, around for decades and their potential of being able to grow what they're doing is going to be for a more long-term investor. But I do wanna kind of flow into that. Now that the, uh, you know, kind of the stage is set from February, which was really kind of the, um, the arc of arc, and where they started to move. This next piece, which is arc is down 30% from its highs, and a lot of people are essentially 
saying, hey, is this the time to sell? And uh, hopefully we can answer this question for you. Over the past several years, ARK Investment ETF has been one of the most successful ETFs in the entire world. Its inception in late 2014 through the end of 2020, a 560% return. Pretty amazing if you think about all that. Assets exploded from 1.8 at the start of 2020 to around 28 billion. So that was really where the growth was, was in 2020, as I indicated, around mid 2020 was where we really started seeing this massive growth. And if you look at their net flows, and I wanna kind of flow here of both net flows and the one day, the five day, and you can kind of see here, we've got a one day, uh, a five day, and a 30 day, all on the negative. Now, of course, the 90 day stretches back into February, which, when, which is when we saw kind of the top of the market also showing the February chart there where you saw the net flow at the top of the market. And then here we are now in May, and we've seen kind of this up and bumping around. But the big deal is that we have a net flow of negative 397 in the 30-day outlook. In the five-day, it's net minus 769. In the one-day, it was minus 85. So you can see this is a pretty heavy outflow with ARK, the ETF. Now, and you can kind of flow along here across all the ARK properties. If you look at the genomic product, it's also having a tremendous amount of outflow. The generational, uh, the generate next generation internet, also big outflows. And then FinTech, a little bit of growth here in the 30 day, but still much lower in terms of outflow though. And then Arc Space, a little bit of, almost flat, and then a little bit of a decline in the five, and then way up on the 30 day. So there are some signs of long-term life here, and I think that's kind of the factor that we're looking for, especially when you look at ARC's overall investments. I wanna jump back to their ETF and kind of analyze why we have seen this bloody transition from ARC being what was once kind of the golden child of Wall Street to where they are right now. Let's take a look at their holdings currently. Tesla, of course, leads as their top weighted and number one position at 10% of their total investment. Teladoc comes in at number two. Roku comes in at number three, Square, and then Zoom, uh, rounding out their top five. You see, of course, Shopify, Zillow, Spotify, Twilio, and then Unity Software in there. Here's the thing, you look at this lineup, this kind of this dirty dozen of tech companies, all of which have taken some pretty heavy uh, heat in the past, say, 30 days. And the bigger question is a lot of these companies are really struggling with long-term roadmap strategies. And that's, I think, the issue that's causing the amount of outflow that we're seeing with ARC. So let's take a look. I wanna to go to the number one holding here. So I'm gonna jump over to our trading view. All right, so obviously this is what, you, if you're invested in Tesla, you guys, of course, are already booming up. The big thing is, is that Tesla has, has really taken a beating, of course. Here's the growth that Tesla has seen. And then if you look kind of right here, this is where we are today. And Tesla is really kind of skimming the bottom again, which is showing some very interesting uh, strategy. I am working on a sentiment analysis for Tesla to really take a look at what this stock is potentially going to do in the future. When you look at some of the sentiment analysis that's out there, this is one of those that is, again, struggling with being able to kind of get a bounce off the bottom. And I just don't know, and I'm concerned, as a Tesla investor, full disclosure, I'm concerned with whether or not Tesla can start to pull itself out of here. And back to the holdings position, let's kind of jump back over there for a second. Back to the holdings position, when you look at where ARC is and Tesla's position, at 10%. My question is, could we see ARC repositioning some of that holding into other things that could help kind of, I don't know if it would be dollar cost averaging, but in the essence of basically helping that ETF reposition for maybe a longer term play. And I think that's a big factor here. I also want to jump over to uh, my trading view of Zoom. And this one is one that I've done an analysis on for sentiment. I wanna kind of zoom in here, no pun intended. But you can kind of see something right here that's very interesting, cross-competitive sentiment. Now, what I wanted to pull here with Zoom 
is back in, here we are in May of last year. So this is of course 2020 in the middle of, you know, a, a global situation that kind of has moved Zoom's stock price on an exploding layer. Now the advantage was, is their cross competitive sentiment ranking was fairly low, 61.28, and, and this is a good thing. When you have a low cross-competitive sentiment, it usually means that you don't have a lot of competitors that are flowing into a sentiment score analysis in comparison to what you're doing. So obviously when you have a low number, it, you'll start to see a high uh, impact score, whether it's in a stock price, in signups, number of users, all those kind of things started exploding. Negative amplification also right here was 31.06, which is fairly low. Now this is kind of the alternate effect. The lower the score, the better. So a negative amplification you want in, I mean, if you're a perfect brand, you've got an under 10 score. That's someone that is just killing it with PR. They're doing a great job. Nobody's talking bad about the brand. Everybody loves them. Uh, Apple, for instance, has in has been and surrounds around a 15 negative uh, amplification score. And 15 is again, one of those great scores. Also, when you look at Zoom right here, let's kind of jump to this um, period of time, which as you can see here is October from their high, right here, October the 19th, which basically stuck this uh, stock price at $571. And then the slide we see, and then it's next high, which is February 16th, and then our continual slide. Here's what's happened is competition has started to invade Zoom's overall program. Now, Zoom being one of the top five holdings for uh, ARC has a problem right now. Competitors are starting to loop in. There's a lot more movement in the space and their negative amplification score has more than tr almost tripled. Uh, to 82.41. This is not good. When you see a negative amplification, again, it's it's going back to the whole point of either you have problems in the user uh, base, you have problems in the technology, or you have in this particular case problems in the conviction of that particular stock being able to pull itself out. So what we did was we did an analysis here on where could Zoom continue. Even at the current rate of negative amplification and cross-competitive uh, sentiment analysis, this stock is still going to see what we think is going to be a bottom. And the bottom it looks like it could end up somewhere in the 200 to 300 range. The stock currently is trading at around 317. So we see this skirting along the bottom for quite some time. Uh, all the way into September. This is not a good sign for short-term investment when it comes to the ETF, meaning ARK. So let's jump over to ARK and do the same thing. And, I'll, and then I wanna get into uh, some of the, kind of the overarching sentiment of where this ETF is from a kind of a holistic standpoint. So let's jump over here now. I wanna take a look at negative amplification for ARK during its rise in the latter half of last year. So this is in December, right here, where we pick up all the way to ARC's high right there. Let's pull that up. And ARC's high was at 157 on February 12th, when we saw the amount of inflows that were really flooding into ARC. And that is one of the problems because this area right here is where most of the risk tolerance is exposed. And risk tolerance meaning people that have invested in the ETF in a period in which it was on its ascent, of which now we are dealing with some pretty uh, troubling times. So if you look at uh, sentiment, very high, which is good during an upswing, negative application, not super low, but not super high. Still a problem here, and I think that was more so in kind of the bears on ARK's investments, a lot of people who were shorting Tesla, et cetera. This is where I think this came from. Now let's take a look at ARK a little closer here. Let's zoom in. And as you can kind of see, as we get into the dates here, and now we are here at their March 15th 
secondary savior uh, section, which is when they kind of bounced off the floor right here. And their sentiment, of course, fell to 61.29. The big one here is the negative ampli amplification. Negative amplification really rose a lot on just the ARC ETF. We also looked at where negative amplification and sentiment scored against the number of investments the ARC ETF is currently holding. So when you look at that and you kind of see where they are long-term, let's kind of boom out a little bit here. I want to kind of go down to where we're moving into May. This right here basically shows ARC kind of bouncing along the bottom. So right here is where I think we're going to end up in this 100 to 110 range. And this could be the new floor for ARC. So the opportunity here is definitely a good one if this holds out as a buying opportunity for those who are still very convicted in long-term plays when it comes to technology. Now, remember, our show is about technology and innovation in all these things. We track EVs, AI, robotics, cryptocurrencies, digital assets, all the forward-thinking innovative. I kind of think of our show much like ARC in the sense of we're really looking forward as a long play on where these technologies can go. The unfortunate thing is I think we're going to continue to see a bit of a rash reaction because back to this chart, I want to jump back to the arc chart, is because of this period right here. This period right here is the exposed investors that are essentially trying to figure a way out. Now, there's two ways out. You can either take your bumps and move on, or you hunker down and you're moving in for the long-term haul with Kathy Wood trying to move and to slowly dollar cost average on investments on your way up to a comfortable number, which could be the 150s back to the 170s for ARC, but it may be years away. So I wanted to take a look at the investment lineup. So I wanna go back over here to kind of just look at some of the investment lineup. So we've kind of run through those. Let's over here and look at the overall stock analysis real quickly. Um, and this is, you can find this link right here uh, in the lower uh, port, uh, part of the video there. We'll try to put a link to it in there, but it's pretty easy to find in terms of ARCs full. They're very transparent in terms of an ETF. You can kind of see the lineup here, but what we did was we did a weighted sentiment score across all of the 56 investments that ARC currently, is it 56 or 50? Yeah, 56 investments um, that they currently hold. Obviously, Tesla, you know, and the top 10 really holding a large position, but we did do a weighted sentiment. So in other words, um, it's weighted against the amount of investment that they've done. Uh, so we scored against that. And then we looked at sentiment on all these companies, uh, general sentiment. And this is uh, consumer sentiment, uh, consumer satisfaction sentiment. It also looks at just the general uh, natural language processing that we analyze across all of these different stocks. And you can kind of see in February, sentiment was very high at 80.13 across all 56. Actually, there was fewer because she has invested in some new ones that weren't in there in February. And then it starts to slide a little bit in March to 76.59, 72 in April, and a continued slide here in May at 70. The other thing that is concerning is the negative amplification. It's going the other way. Negative amplification, amplification. There were some companies that had some problems in here uh, at 42.36, 43, 44 in April. And here we are with a big jump in May on negative amplification to 50.11. Now, this is where it gets really uh, a little squirrely, in, in my opinion, is the, the look of where ARC could be in the next coming months is really going to be dependent, I think, on the top 20% of their portfolio. Meaning, how are these companies performing in that top 20%? Because those are the ones that get the most press. They also get the most exposure. And I think at this point, ARC, along with all of the CEOs of those companies that are in this, need to be on a PR round in a big way to try to stave off some of the concerns. Tesla 
is the number one offender in terms of being able to stave off of what's happening in terms of PR problems. Elon, we know, does not have a PR team. He's fired him a few, few uh, maybe a year ago. And the issue is, I think, for Tesla is their continuing miss on many of the promises that Tesla is trying to do, everything from full self-driving. You look at the Model S and X refresh. You look at the battery situation, the Cybertruck situation, the plant uh, situation. All of these things are kind of coming to a head at one time. And Tesla is definitely suffering right now in terms of a sub 600. Now, can they return? Here's where I think that blows into some very interesting scenarios. And there's some very key players here. I wanna kind of jump back to the top 10 slide over there. Let's go back to that one. So right here is, and this, this is important because these right here are the critical players. And if you think about each one of these, just let's step away from it, pull your investment mind back, and I want you to think about these companies in different ways. Forget about being convicted and in investing in them. Teladoc was blowing up during a pandemic and of course had a massive gains and of course have also had a massive reduction uh, because of that. Now here's the other thing, and, and this is something that's real in the medical space, is that we may not necessarily see, this may have not been the move that put telemedicine over the moon. It, and what I mean by that is this could be a long haul for Teladoc. So that is a concerning thing. Roku, another scenario, massive, even though they are a very innovative company, very, very heavy competition. And it's in a crowded space in which companies like Disney, you know, HBO Max, you name it, they are after the new streaming customer. And Roku is in a very precarious situation of how they can pull out. Square has a play here. And I think Square's play is going to be in crypto. Zoom has a confidence issue in terms of competition that are starting to move in. Zoom is still a big one, but Google, interestingly enough, Google Meet and also Microsoft Teams has made massive inroads to this market just in the last year. And then you get in companies around the Zillow aspect where uh, there are so many competitors moving into this space that's gonna be another one that really starts to struggle as we start to see a potential hit on the real estate market. So all of these factors lean toward the next 12 months for these particular companies, which are in the top of her portfolio, of being downward trends, which simply means that the ARK ETF could see a flat and or downward trend over the next year before we see a tech resurgence, which I think will happen and it will happen at a very interesting time. There's some key things that need to adjust for what could happen in the next 12 months. Many of those are gonna happen with you know, some of the bigger players, the cryptocurrency market, the EV market, are the two factors I think that really start to guide these tech innovations and where this market is going. So with all that being said, I know that's kind of, uh, you know, well, Paul, did you tell us anything that is gonna help us long-term? Listen, if you invested at the top and your risk tolerance is high, meaning you're willing to hold longer, then I think you have to hold the ARK ETF. If you invested during that rise and you feel like you can hold or and or exit ARK in a position where you can put that money to work rather than waiting for that uh, to essentially recover and gain steam again, I think now is the time to sell for you. In other words, if you invested anywhere under a hundred bucks, uh, that is now is the time to probably vacate, move your money because this is a long-term play. That's only if you are looking at short-term technology wins. If you're looking at short-term technology wins, right now it's very slim pickings because of the scenarios that were faced with the fact that technology is really kind of in a bit of a lull, though I do think we are going to see a very interesting fall and end of year movement in the technology space, mainly because we see so much innovation that's happening that's very close to fruition and where it could flow. So those are my, my recommendations. And again, this is not a buying recommendation, not financial advice, but these are the things that I look at in terms of analysis. When you look at where the long-term play goes, sentiment plays out, are you in it for the long haul? Can you 
is your risk tolerance there to be able to grow with ARC and uh, Kathy Wood's um, plan? And I think that's a, lo a long play. Kathy is, of course, looking at the five-year plan. If you look at a lot of her interviews, she really moves and looks at five-year playouts. And I believe that's really where ARC is heading, is in a five-year steady. I don't know that we see another 500% growth ETF from where they are today. But anyway, we're going to continue to, to break these markets down. We're going to continue to look at technology and drive in deep on many of these things. If you have an idea for a show and you want to maybe say, hey, let's get the CEO on or do analysis on this, a market mover on this, shoot the idea over to producer at revernetworks.com. You can always hit me up on Twitter at Paul Barron. That's the easiest way. Again, you guys stay safe out there. We'll catch you next time right here on TechPath.